Hey, hey! איזה סטאפ מטורף. אוקיי, I'm also going to be speaking in English, so I'm glad we started that off, so I can continue, jump on that wagon. Uh, so yeah, I want to tell you today about the time I built a carousel from scratch in React and what I learned about doing animations in a framework that uses a virtual DOM. Is this okay? Can you guys hear me? Cool. Uh, so let me just tell you a few things about myself. I'm a front-end developer. For the next uh, five hours, less than five hours, with Gala Coral, and then starting on Sunday with Really. Uh, at Gala Coral, we use React to build uh, configurable web components that we can then use across all our products with different settings, and that is where I built the carousel. I am also the co-founder of an organization called Extend that is dedicated to uh, opening up the tech world to diverse engineers. We do a bunch of stuff, but one thing that I think might be interesting to some of you is we have a podcast, also called Extend, where we talk to experienced uh, developers about their career paths and how they got to where they are and life hacks and tips and so on. Uh, so if that's interesting, look us up on Facebook or wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, we interviewed Shai a couple of episodes ago. Uh, it's not our best episode, but it might be where you want to start. Uh, other than that, I really feel compelled to tell you that my cat did not think this talk is a good idea. And when I practiced it at home, he yelled at me the entire time. So actually, I never did this one time from beginning to end. I hope it's okay. I hope it's in under 10 minutes. And please also register that he disapproves of this whole thing. Um, okay, so let's talk about carousels. Um, so first of all, just so we're all on the same page, uh, the carousel is the UI element that has slides coming in horizontally one after the other. It's sometimes called a slideshow or a slider. And when I was asked to build that, my first thought was, let's just get an external library to do it. Um, but I found out that most of the carousel libraries don't play well with React, and the animation libraries that we have in React uh, weren't configurable to the extent that we needed them to be configurable. And so I had to build it from scratch. Um, and so I went on Google to look for other people who had built carousels and uh, learn from them, slash copy their code. Um, and what I found out, looking at a lot of examples of how people usually do carousels, is that there is this underlying pattern to them all, which is grab a DOM element, do something with it, right? So if you're using jQuery animate, that's what you do. If you're using CSS, you'll change the class on the DOM element, but the underlying thinking is always the same. Grab a DOM element, do something with it. And of course, you can't do that in React. Right, Because in React, you change the DOM by going through the virtual DOM. If you touch the actual DOM at the same time, you're going to end up with discrepancies and some unexpected results. Nobody wants that. Um, and so I, I set about trying to build this carousel by myself, and then I found out that this pattern of grab a DOM element, do something with it as a way to do animations, is also something that exists in my head. In fact, this is the mental model that I have always had about how we do animations. And it was difficult for me to try and break that. I needed to build a new mental model. I needed to find a new way of thinking about animations in React. Uh, and that's what I want to share with you today. So first, uh, let's just remind ourselves uh, how we change the DOM in React. Like I said, we have to go through the virtual DOM. We have to change the virtual DOM. We do that by calling the component render method with different data, and we can do that by calling set state. Right? So this is the basic flow in React. We call set state. Set state calls the render method. The render method build, builds the virtual DOM. React calculates the difference. Um, and when we're very clear about this, it already clues us in a little bit into how we should be doing animations with React, which is we need to start from the state. We need to find a way to structure our state and call set state in a way that will trigger the animation we want when we want it. Now, 
This can be clarified even further when we think about how we usually do animations, which is generally one of two ways. Uh, we can either uh, use CSS, so we will change a class which will apply a different CSS, like a change in opacity, or we can do that by uh, using inline styles, which uh, allows us to do some calculations about our elements. And so for me, the question eventually became this connection right here, right? How do we set state? How do we initialize state? And how do we call set state in order to create a class change or an inline style change when we want our animation to run? Um, and this is basically the question that I think you need to answer when you're doing animations in React. Uh, it's the only question you need to answer. So if you have an answer for this, you'll be able to do animations in React, but you will need to have an answer for this. Um, I want to show you two examples of carousels that I've uh, set up. Uh, so this is a very sort of basic implementation of the type of carousel that I'd built. Uh, both of these are set up as code pens that I will share with you so you guys can look at the whole code and play with it, do whatever you want. Um, the, the way that a sliding carousel works is you'll have a container with a predetermined width and uh, overflow set to hidden, and behind it you'll have a list of elements with uh, each element being um, the same width as the container, and you move that list along the x-axis, and that's what causes different slides to come into view. And you can see that this is what we're doing here, right, with this translate x that moves the, uh, the list horizontally. And you can also see here that this is directly tied in to a piece of our state, this active index property. Okay, so this is the connection that we're always looking for when we want to do animations in React. Um, I initialize the active index to zero, and then whenever I want my animation to run, I'll increment or decrement it. In this case, uh, on a click event, I'll incre increment it, and this number here will get recalculated again every time by 100% and move my list by 100% every time until it resets. Uh, so this is inline style. Um, I have another example set up for uh, CSS, uh, for class chain, sorry. Uh, so this is a fade-in slideshow. Here we'll have the slides stack one on top of each other and every time change the opacity of one of them to be uh, one so that slide is visible. The other slides will have an opacity of zero. Um, the state is set up and changed here in the same way. But instead, in my render method, instead of calculating a new style, what I'll do is this uh, fairly um, common pattern. Oh my god! Okay. Uh, so, so the cat totally threw me off, and I have no idea, but apparently I need to finish. I'm almost done. Um, so we have this, uh, apparent, this pretty common pattern where we take the active class and move it from slide, slide to slide. Every time it'll get recalculated based, again, on this piece of state, this active index. Um, these are two pretty straightforward examples, but I think they're good examples of this whole thought process that you need to go through when you're thinking about animations in React. And if you can understand them, and if you can understand that reasoning that's beneath them, uh, I've found that you can do almost any kind of animation you want without the need for external libraries. So it's been very helpful to me to think about animations like that. I hope it'll be helpful to you too. Um, I've set up these two examples right here. Feel free to look at them and play with them and, you know, fork them, do whatever you want. And uh, that's it. Thanks.